Let's start off with a topic called probabilities. Now, I have seen a lot of people having a difficulty, having a little difficulty with this topic because of the number of formulas and all that's there. So, uh, before I get into the contained part of it, I want to just discuss, I'll just assure you that uh, you don't have to learn any formula with Bayes theorem, conditional probability, joint probability or anything. You'll understand, you'll be able to do every single sum without knowing any of the formulas, right? So, we'll come to the basics like, you know, what is a random event and what is uh, an outcome and exhaustive and all that a little later. Let me just simply barge into one sum and through that one sum, I will do every single possible conditional, unconditional, dependent, independent event. Bayes theorem everything without using any formulas right three basic formulas are required let me just do that first and then everything else you will have no other formula in the whole of probability with me just be with me for 10 minutes and you'll, you'll have it everything clear first of all probability is equal to number of favorable outcomes divided by sample space so out of 100 situations, if something out of 100 events or 100 cases or 100 uh, situations, if something happens 20 times, we say that the probability is equal to 20%. That is simple. There is no formula as such. If you take all the possible events, if you take all the possible options, the summation of probability is equal to 1. The total of all the possible cases has to be equal to 100% if you've considered all the possible outcomes, all the possible options available. Your total probability has to be equal to 100%. Probability of every single value has to be somewhere between 0 and 1. I'm not writing equals to sign because if it is equal to 0, it's an impossible event. The probability is 0%, that means it cannot happen. And if the probability is equal to 1, that means it's a guaranteed event. It's a sure shot event, it's a fact. It's not a probability that you need to see. It's a fact because 100% this is going to happen. So no formulas as such. One formula, probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. That's probability of A intersection B. That's the only formula. I'll not give you any other formula. So probability of A union B, that either A will happen or B will happen, is probability of A plus probability of B. But then you've double counted the area wherein A and B are both happening together. So suppose in 20 situation A happens, in 30 situation B happens. So you're saying in 50 situations A or B is happening. But in the 20 and the 30 situation, 5 situations were common. So you did a double counting. So 20 plus 30. So in 15 situation only A happens. In 25 situation only B happens. And in 5 situations both are happening. So 20 plus 30 minus 5. That is 45. So 45 cases may. In 45 cases A or B either one is happening. A union B is either A or B is happening. That is A happening plus B happening minus A intersection B. That is A and B both happening. Correct. And for independent events, for independent events, probability of A and B both happening together is equal to PA into PB. Probability of A and B both happening is equal to PA into PB. How do you get that? Just let me give you an example. So you toss a coin, head or tail, two options. You throw a dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six options. The probability of getting a 4 on the dice is 1, four, one sixth. The probability of getting a head is let's say half. So you say half into 1, 6 is the probability of getting a head and a 4. That is what I'm saying, right? Probability of getting a head is 1 half. Probability of getting a 4 on the dice is 1 sixth. You're saying half into 1, 6. That is 1 twelfth is the probability. It is very simple logic. How many sample cases are there? Head ke saath mein, with the head you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. With the tail you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have 6 into 2 options, half into 6, 2 into 6, 12 options. And out of which favorable outcome is what? Head and 4, that is only one outcome. So favorable number of outcomes divided by sample space is going to give you the probability. That is why PA into PB, because they are independent, there is no overlap. I'll come to this a little later. Anyways, this part is okay. 
the probability of anything is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total amount of the total number of options the probability equals to 1 is when all the values when you've taken all the cases together then 100% probability the summation of all the probabilities the probability of every event has to be between 0 and 1 probability of a union b is pa plus pb minus pa intersection b is that part okay you can just take this down very quickly and we'll move to the sum and you'll have everything taken care of no other formula i'll make you mock up no Bayes theorem formula i don't know the Bayes theorem formula so no formulas we'll do just take this very quickly Quickly, please. Be very attentive, right? Now, let's say we've got this company called ONGC. ONGC is involved in selling oil, right? So, ONGC is a company that is involved in selling oil. Now, ONGC's profit should be higher when oil prices are higher, ONGC's profit should be lower when oil prices are lower. So now the ONGC's share price will depend on oil or oil's price will depend on ONGC. Tell me, ONGC's share price will depend on oil. So if the prices of oil is going up and down, all the oil companies profitability will go up or down accordingly. The oil companies profitability will not determine the oil price. The oil price will determine the ONGC's profitability. So oil is independent and ONGC's profitability is dependent on oil. So let's take an event wherein let's take the independent event to be the oil price ka movement, the movement of the oil price and the dependent event to be the ONGC's profitability. All right, everybody with me? So let's say there are 100 cases in the beginning. So oil will go up or oil will go down. There are two situations possible. Let's say there is a 60% probability that oil goes up. There is a 40% probability that oil goes down. If oil goes up, ONGC's profitability might go up, it might go down. If oil goes up, ONGC's profitability might go up, might go down. Because the company does not only depend on oil prices, but on other factors as well. Let's say, right, you don't need to know anything about stock market right now to do this sum. It's very simple. Now, if oil has gone up, if oil has gone up, then the probability that ONGC goes up is 80%. And if oil has gone up, then the probability of ONGC going down has to be 20% only. Agreed? In case oil goes down, again, ONGC can either go up or ONGC might go down. The probability that ONGC goes up is only 10%. But ONGC going down is 90% if the oil prices have fallen, right? So if oil goes up, 80% chances are that ONGC's price is going to go up and 20% chances are that ONGC's prices are going to go down. If oil prices have gone down, there is a 10% chance that ONGC will go up and there is only a there is a 90% chance that ONGC's value will go down. Let's say we have total 100 situations. Out of 100 situations, in 60 cases, oil goes up and 40 cases, oil goes down. Out of those 60 cases, 80% of those 60 cases, ONGC is going up. So let's say 80% of 60 cases would be 48 cases. Out of 60 cases, 80% of the cases, ONGC goes up. That is 48 out of 100 cases. Total number of cases were 100, so therefore we can always use a percent sign. 
out of 60 cases, 20% cases, ONGC is going down. So 60 into 20% is 12. Out of 40 cases, 10% cases, ONGC's price is going up. That is only 4 cases, 10% of the 40 situations. Out of 40 situations, 90% of the situations, ONGC's price is going down. That is 36. And since the total, you have divided 60 into 80 is to 20 ratio. You have divided 40 into, into 10 is to 20, uh, 10, into 9, 10 is to 90 ratio. Therefore, this total has to be 100. You have divided 60 into 48 is to 12, 80 is to 20 ratio. So this is 60. You have divided 40 into 10 is to 90 ratio. So this is 40. Is everybody okay till here? Sure. So this has to be 100 and therefore I am using these percentages. Now just one more thing and more or less we are done. Now ONGC is going up in how many cases? ONGC is going up in how many cases? In 48 and 4 these cases. Out of total 100 situations. ONGC has gone up in 48 and 4, 52 number of situations. Out of total 100 situations, ONGC has gone up in 48 and 4% cases. You cannot say 80 and 10. Because 80% of the cases ONGC is going up if oil has gone up. 10% of the cases ONGC goes up if oil has gone down. Out of total 100 situations, sample space, ONGC has gone up in 52 cases. Out of total 100 cases, ONGC has gone down in 48 cases. Everybody with me till here? Now, 60% and 40% probability of oil going up is equal to 60%. Probability of oil going down is equal to 40%. These two are the unconditional probability of independent events oil going up and down is not dependent on ONGC's profitability but ONGC's profitability is dependent on oil and it is unconditional probability of the independent event oil whether oil goes up or oil goes down when you are looking at these probabilities they are the conditional probabilities of dependent events think probability that ONGC will go up given that oil has gone up so oil has gone up is a fact oil has gone up now tell me what is the probability of ONGC going up now understand the formula also out of 60 situations in which oil has gone up your sample space is 60 now oil has gone up that is a fact it is a sample space out of these 60 cases, in how many cases is ONGC going up? 48 cases. 48 divided by 60 is 80%. 48 divided by 60 is 80%. So probability of ONGC going up, given that oil has gone up. Oil has gone up is your given. It's your fact. It's your sample space. That is equal to 80%. Probability that ONGC goes down, given that oil has gone up, is equal to 20%. Probability that ONGC goes up given that oil has gone down. Please pardon me, I am not writing so much. You will be copying everything properly later. Just concentrate as 10%. And the probability that ONGC has gone down given that oil has gone down is equal to 90%. All these probabilities are conditional probabilities of dependent events. Why conditional? Because they are conditional on the fact whether oil has gone up or has gone down. If oil has gone up, then the probability of ONGC going up is 80. If oil has gone down, then the probability of ONGC going down is 20%. So these probabilities are conditional upon the fact whether oil has gone up or down. Then tell me what is the probability of ONGC going up and down. <clears throat> Following? The sample space is the fact oil has gone up. This is a sample space. So 40 cases oil has gone down. Out of these 40 situations, in how many situations is ONGC going up? 4. So 4 divided by 40 is 10% conditional probability. Out of this sample space, out of these 40 situations, in how many situations has ONGC gone up? 4 cases. So that is 10% is the conditional probability of dependent event, conditional upon the fact of the independent event. Correct everybody? These probabilities are joint probabilities. Probability that ONGC has gone up Sorry, ONGC has gone up, rather, 
the probability that ONGC has gone up and oil has also gone up, both the events happening together is 48%. Out of total 100 situations, in 48 situations, oil has gone up and ONGC both have gone up. None of the other situations, both are true. It's a joint probability, two things happening together. The probability that ONGC has gone down and oil has gone up has gone up oil has gone up and ONGC has gone down is 12% both the things happening is 12 probability that ONGC has gone up and oil has gone down is 4% the probability that ONGC has gone down and oil has gone down both have gone down is equal to 36% that is your joint probability <coughs> Following joint probability, I'll repeat the whole thing again at the end. I'll summarize it again. But joint probability, both the events happening together, out of 100 situations, oil went up and ONGC went down in only 48 situations. Out of 100 situations, oil went up and ONGC went down happened only in 12 situations. Probability that ONGC went up is equal to 52% and ONGC went down is equal to 48%. That is the unconditional probability of dependent events. Think this was the conditional probability of dependent event. ONGC will go up 80% of the times if oil has gone up. But over here, ONGC goes up 52% of the times irrespective of whether oil has gone up or oil has gone down. In totality, ONGC is going up 52% of the times and in totality ONGC is going down 48% of the times irrespective of whether oil has gone up or oil has gone down. So this is the unconditional probability. It's not conditioned on whether oil has gone up or whether oil has gone down. It is the unconditional probability of the dependent event. These are your 52% and 48% probabilities. So whether oil has gone up or gone down doesn't matter. Is everybody comfortable till here? It's very easy. I'll repeat it. We'll do another example or so. But till here it's fine for once. All right. Now what is your condition? Uh, what is your base theorem? Now oil never depends on ONGC. ONGC depends on oil. Because oil is a commodity that this company is selling. Right. Now just understand. Suppose I want to find out. What is the probability that oil would have gone up. Given that ONGC has suppose gone down or gone up, basically what I'm trying to tell you is, if this is the answer, what is the probability that question would have been this? If this is the outcome, then tell me what is the probability that this would have had happened? If this is the outcome, is this? if this is what has happened, then tell me what is the probability that this would have had happened earlier? That is what Bayes' theorem tells us. Just give me one second and it will be clear. I think I am losing out a little bit on space. Just bear with me over here a little bit please. The probability that, let's say, what is the probability that oil went up given that ONGC has gone up? What is the probability that oil has gone up given that ONGC has gone up? That is Bayes' theorem. What is the probability? Probability is favorable outcome divided by sample space. ONGC has gone up in total how many situations? 52 situations. So 52 becomes my sample space. Out of 52 situations where ONGC has gone up, how many cases has oil gone up out of these situations? 48 situations oil has gone up. So 48 by 52 becomes the answer. ONGC has gone up in total 52 situations out of which in 48 situations oil is going up. So 48 by 52 becomes a probability of oil going up given that ONGC has gone up. The probability that oil goes down given that ONGC has gone up is equal to ONGC has gone up again in 52 cases out of which oil went down in only 4 cases out of these 52. 52 is your sample space. Out of these 52 cases, oil went down in only 4 cases. Favorable outcome divided by sample space. What is the probability that oil went up given that ONGC has gone down? ONGC went down in a total of 48 situations. Out of these 48 situations in the sample space, oil has gone up only in 12 cases. So 12 divided by 48. Total 48 cases, ONGC went down. That is your sample space. I'm telling you, ONGC has gone down. 
Now, please remember, it does not mean that oil depends on ONGC. We are not trying to do that over here. All we are saying is, if the outcome is that ONGC has gone down, what is the probability that oil would have fallen? That is, the fall of ONGC, what is the reason, what is the probability that the reason behind ONGC's profitability going down is the oil price? We are trying to look at that. That ONGC goes down in 48 cases, out of which 12 cases, it is not because of oil going down. Oil has gone up in these cases. And how many cases, what is the probability that oil must have gone down, given that ONGC has gone down, would be 36 by 48 cases. This portion is your Bayes theorem. In a way, if you see, it is like the conditional probability of independent event on dependent, but that's very wrong to say. Because dependent, independent event never depends on dependent. That is why we don't call it conditional probability. Over here it was conditional because if this is what has happened, if independent event, if the outcome of oil is this, then what is the probability of ONGC going up and down? We can call this conditional probability. Why can't we call this conditional probability? That if ONGC goes up, then oil will happen? No. If ONGC has gone up, then what is the probability that oil would have gone up or gone down? We are trying to find out the probability of the event that would have had happened given that the outcome is this. So therefore, it is not conditional probability of independent on dependent. It's not possible because independent is independent event. It depends. It does not depend on the dependent's outcome. But if the dependent, if the outcome is this, what is the probability that this would have happened is Bayes theorem. Well, is everybody absolutely clear? Unconditional probability of the independent event, simply the probability of independent event. Conditional probability of dependent event, given that this has happened, what is the probability of this one? Joint probability, both events happening together, this into this, out of 60% cases, 80% cases this is happening. Joint probabilities, using the joint probability, ONGC is going up in total 52% of the cases. Why is it 52? Because you are dividing the same 60, 14, 80, 20 and 10, 90 ratio. So this summation has to be 100. So a total of 52 cases ONGC has gone up irrespective of whatever happened to the independent event. So these are the unconditional probabilities of the dependent event. And when you want to find out the probability of the of an independent event happening based on the outcome of the dependent event, it is your base theorem. If you want to frame formulas now, you are more than welcome to do so. If I want to create a formula of let's say 80%, the formula of 80% that is, if I'm just giving you deliberately, you don't have to copy this like 80%. So 80% is probability of let's say A happen. No, this is A, this is B. Suppose let's assume this is A, this is B. So probability of B given that A has happened is equal to probability of A intersection B that is this one 48 divided by probability of A. Can't you frame the formulas now? Can't you derive the formulas? You can derive all the formulas. Bayes theorem formula also you can derive. The denominator will be probability of A intersection B and probability of A not intersection B is the sample space. This has to happen in both the cases. Probability of oil going up with intersection of ONGC going up. Probability of oil going down with ONGC going up. That is the sample space. And on top you will have the intersection of these two only. So you can frame the formulas. You can write 48. What is 48? P A intersection B. What is 52? PA intersection B and PA naught intersection B. So you can frame the formulas whenever you feel like. Why would you want to mug up the formulas if you can frame it? The moment you have done this table, this, this kind of a decision tree, you are done with the question. Where, whether they are asking joint, conditional, unconditional and the terms are very, very logical. Conditional, unconditional, dependent, independent. If you understand the meanings, you will never get confused. And now do you see, I don't need to learn any single formula, be it conditional, joint, unconditional, Bayes theorem. I don't need a single formula for myself. This takes care of the whole of probability. Other concepts also will be doing exactly in the same way, be it statistics, be it annuities, be it, uh, you know, even those uniform, non-uniform, discrete and all, you will have no issue. I will not make you mug up even a single thing. So be it statistics, be it any part of this, you need to get to this level of understanding. Is everybody comfortable? So you take this one question down in a really very, very nice manner. You take every single value, write it nicely. I have been a little lazy over here, but you write it very, very properly everything. So that one question takes care of everything. And please make sure you are bracketing this part also and you are putting it in the graph or in the flow chart also because it will be very easy for you to revise later on. See if this, this part is 100% okay with you.
comfortable take this down we're done with this section right for now for now i'll give you a few minutes to copy All right, I hope this is fine. 